Hildegard is the first known composer. She's the first person that has her name written on a piece of music that we can trace it back to a historical person. Everyone before her was grouped under the same title of anonymous. My name is Patrick Quigley. I am the founder and artistic director of Seraphic Fire. This is, in fact, the opening of our 18th season. We're quite a versatile ensemble, so we perform music from the medieval era, starting somewhere in 800 AD, but also from the Baroque, classical, romantic, and modern periods. A lot of what we do is trying to make the music sound like what the composer thought it would sound like. We do not perform with amplification. We're an entirely acoustic ensemble. Whenever we're performing music that is more than, say, 500 years old, we have to participate in some sort of musical archaeology. This is particularly appropriate for this concert. Uh, Hildegard of Bingen was born at the end of the 11th century. This piece was written probably sometime between 1140 and 1150 AD. At eight years old, her parents committed her to religious life. It was written for a community of women that Hildegard was the leader of. And so uh, she was a visionary. She had received ecstatic visions. And one of her visions was that she should take her women out of the monastery where they, that they were sharing with a group of Benedictine monks and move it to the ruins of an older monastery. This piece, we think, was written for the dedication of that new monastery. It's written in a style and in a, in a musical language that we don't have the key to anymore. We know the notes that she wrote, and we know the order that they come in, and we know the words that were underneath them, but everything else is uh, something that we've had to reconstruct. Hildegard only wrote one line of music. At the time that Hildegard was writing, we hadn't actually gotten to the point where we had multiple lines of music being written on top of each other. The vocal quality of women singing in unison creates this sort of otherworldly sound. Particularly when all of them are singing the exact same notes at the same time, which is very difficult. The story is about a woman who is trying to choose between a life of the world and a life with the virtues who are in a more celestial realm. It's remarkable because it's so high. It's a very, very high piece of music. And it's in a different mode. At the time that Hildegard was composing, we didn't have keys in the way that we had like C major, C minor, D major, D minor. They only had the white keys on the piano. Sing into the interesting things about your line. You know I don't think that we've even come close to scratching the surface of all the artistic things that we can do. No, One no, of the really no, unique no. things about Ceramic Fire is that we don't really repeat repertoire. In this performance, one of the reasons that we're doing it is not only because it's a great piece of music, but it's performed so seldomly that we hope that our performance and our recording of it will be something that will encourage other people to take this on as a, as a project. And it shows just how much the contribution of women to music was being made even in the 12th century. Oh.